This little thing. Yeah, what is that? It's cool. Yeah, you know what this is? It lacks, it, uh, it lacks a horn. And there are books written on the unicorn. This is from Rita. Beautiful piece. And uh, unicorns, you know, are they real or are they magical or what? Can you, can you actually imagine anything that doesn't exist? That means your imagination would have to be bigger than the creator. So sometimes you imagine things that are pretty gnarly. <laughs> hey, but look at what's coming to pass. Yeah. It's just that you have to be an interplanetary being to check out beings from other planets. How do you think they got Star Wars? I was right. an astral traveler. Hence, and all those guys were astral travelers. They see, you know, beings from other places, and they don't know how to interpret it, but come down here. Cool stuff. And our bodies travel, right? Absolutely. Ourselves. Well, ourselves, not our body. This thing stays back. Thank God. <laughs> Thank you, Drew. Thank you. Good morning. This is not morning. What is this? Four o'clock. <laughs> oh, I just got back to this world. Excuse me. Excuse me. Bring those cells back. Yeah, bring that back in. Hello, everyone. How are we doing today? It was uh, my pleasure always to uh, to sit and talk with you here and uh, to answer your questions and hope that they help you immensely because we're all in a struggle to stay well and to be happy. If you haven't noticed, you know, there's so much stuff going on out there, however you wish to view that. But um, I'm glad that, uh, that a lot of you are getting your wellness and your spirituality because that's the key. Your spirituality, and I know some of you probably don't like to hear me talk about it, but I'm ingrained in both, and you will be too, when you uh, start getting into the raw foods and you start cleaning out all these wastes, getting away from these earthly protein type thinking and, and get into these higher levels of fruits and berries and melons, it's going to expand the consciousness. And I was going to talk to you about uh, you know, how we understand the Creator, God, and get into that, but that's like a whole video. Maybe this weekend I'll sneak in. I know I'm going to do a video this weekend on all the formulas, how to take them, why I created them. Unfortunately, that's going to be a for sale item because it's a lot of work, and uh, but it won't be expensive, you know, just to cover our cost to have them. But it'll uh, help you to understand a little more about the formulas and stuff, just a DVD, you know, whatever our costs are on that. So I really appreciate you tuning in. All you new people, welcome aboard. Uh, uh, going after your health issues is important. Remember, you have to understand the role of the lymphatic system in the human body, the sewer system, your uh, uh, system that cleans the waste from cells and the waste and byproducts from the blood. All of this must filter out through the kidneys or the skin. Uh, understanding how you clean up the GI tract and what causes this ridiculous concept of diseases. And uh, learning also not to be afraid of bacterium, but to understand the role of bacterium. Understanding what's meant by the culturing medium or the terrain as it's been called. The inner condition of how you create. You know, everything as we've said is chemistry. So the chemistry you bring in, you know, so chemist, chemistry is chemistry. They're, you know, we're learning that there's bad chemistry and there's good chemistry, you know, and, and foods are the same way. So we have to, to take a look at that and understand there are certain foods just not fit for man to eat. And man's eating predominantly those foods. And so you can't blame anything but your lifestyles except for your genetics. And that's the big deal. Someone asked me here about gene therapy. And um, I don't believe in much the medical doctors think, to be honest with you. Uh, I love these good surgeons, and I believe surgery and emergency medicine with homeopathy and naturopathy included will be the highest form of healing in that, in that respect and in that focus. However, the general health issues, uh, we have found that all the paths are obviously the number one killer of humans every friggin' year. You know, I've said this before, last year, the year before, over one million deaths, and this is climbing. So it's time that man wakes up before, you know, I don't know, but it's enough to say that uh, health is simple to understand. It's not complex. You don't have to have academic credentials a mile long. Matter of fact, if I can help the layperson cure anything out there using that word, uh, uh, let me do that. That's how simple this is. 
And sometimes simplicity in the eye of academics is, you know, exposing to say the least. So I want to get to your questions about the gene therapy. I don't really go that route. It's like stem cell. Remember, we had the stem cell researcher in here explaining that. And I've had clients that have had the stem cell. And even though we see in the news how they grow these new organs and stuff, I'm telling you, if you take half of what you hear and believe it, you'll probably be close to still being off. There's just so much propaganda, so much crap out there, especially in this country. I mean, people don't. I don't know, it's just, it's disheartening to what has happened to this country. Uh, but, you know, there's a reason creation is moving in this way, and we have to kind of move in that direction and just always stand up for truth, love, happiness, joy, because your, your life is an experience of you. You're the creator. You know, I'll say that in that the end result of what you're going through right now is to be the creator. And sometime I'll do a video on that, and we'll talk more about that. I've hinted at that and talked about it a little bit, and maybe I'll get a little deeper into that subject to help you understand just why you're going through this. And uh, again, touching that most inner self, understanding who you are in the scheme of the physical body, in the scheme of emotions, in the scheme of thought processes, desires, and also in the scheme of the ego. So it's just a... You know, hopefully we'll do a video soon on that. So let's get to some of these questions here because I know some of you are hurting here. And this is from uh, Gabby. And um, uh, thank you uh, for your co lovely comments. Um, uh, appreciate it. Uh, the reason why I am emailing is that my urine is only dark with strands after I eat a meal of junk food. Wow, look at that. But What's nice about that, though, is there is some filtration going on there, sweetheart, because you're, you can, uh, you're still seeing the change of the urine, showing that the chemistry that you're consuming is, is coming out. And uh, that, I think that's a good, a good thing. And I was thinking about that earlier because there are some people that are frustrated with getting these kidneys to filter. And I was thinking, you know, you might, those that are having a hard time getting filtration from the kidneys, uh, definitely think about a lemon juice fast, particularly a three to 10 day lemon juice fast and keep shocking those kidneys with strong astringents like that. At the same time, remember the adrenals and neurotransmitters, particularly dopamine and acetylcholine. You don't have to worry about neurotransmitters and what they are. It's just think about your adrenal glands who sit on top of the kidneys. Get those healthy. You know, and understanding, and that's the problem because they're so attached to the kidneys that the kidney problem becomes the adrenal problem and the adrenal problem becomes the kidney problem. And in our genetics, uh, we've talked a great deal about this, of how the kidney function and the adrenal functions are so low. The blood pressures are so low. Matter of fact, almost we're at these chronic levels where uh, all these functions are so underactive. Low thyroids, low neural responses, uh, low steroids, low hormones, blah, 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 blah. And it's just uh, we have to enliven the human body. We have to give life to the cells again. And life begets life. Death begets death. So you eat death, you get death. If you eat life and vibrancy, you get life and vibrancy. And that's why the raw foods are so important. How man got so way out of that, I think the only explanation is the migration into hostile northern climates for the homo sapien. Not to say they're not beautiful, but uh, the living in these climates and the need to survive in these climates, definitely. You see that all the time on these Alaska programs, the mountain men and all these uh, trappers and all this, and sad to see that. But survival, there are, of course, for the fur and stuff, but still they eat the meat and stuff like that, but it, it limits your intake. There was buying Alaska, and I saw where this one lady had gardens set up with greenhouses up in Alaska, and I thought, smart woman. Uh, after half a day on, a, on grapes, my urine is a lot lighter and no sediment or strands. What does this mean? Well, that's a good question. I'm going to say that sometimes you don't see uh, a sediment in the urine. I think at least 90% of the time you should see sediment in the urine, and grapes should pull that out for you. So I don't know what to say about that. It could just be part of the hydration process and you're not seeing that, or you're not really filtering well at all. I would uh, watch that over a period of time and make sure there are times on the raw foods of grapes and lemons that you're filtering because you should see some robust urine coming out of there, some uh, 
I mean, some sediment in that urine chemistry in there. Uh, but amazing, that, that just shows you that there is some filtration in you, and it also shows you that how toxic these proteins or this junk food is on you to bring out dark urine like that. That's, uh, that, that shows that. And another thing, though, when you're on raw foods and you go into junk foods, uh, and it's happened to me, is there's a shock to the, to the body. Uh, and there was a shock to the kidneys for me after years of raw and going up north, I was so cold one time, uh, I was freezing, and I was in Ohio, and I'd been fruititarian. And so I just, you know, went up with someone I met, and it was so cold in the middle of the night, and I was hungry and cold, and uh, we were in the airport, there was only this meat place, there was no veggies or nothing. And so the only thing I said, just give me a piece of fish, I hadn't had meat in years. I ended up in the hospital with extreme pain, and uh, it was a kidney stone. And it just had shocked my kidneys so bad, spasmed them, and then spasmed the kidney uh, stone out of the buried in the wall. And you know that's. And I think if you go back to McFadden's issue, that supposedly you just never know the facts always. But supposedly in a fast, a long-term fast, breaking it with boiled potatoes, it killed him. Possible. I'm telling you, that's how serious uh, raw foods and fasting is. And those that are doing fasting on water and things, remember, always always do your fruits a few days before you move into your water fast and always break your fast with fruits. Uh, they're the best and the most gentle and the most energetic to the human body. Uh, it almost feels like my kidneys are having selective filtering. Yeah, I mean... I think the real tall tale sign for true filtration is when you're filtering on raw foods. That's going to be the sign. I think that you're going to, if you're still seeing the dark urine, I, I think it really is in your face of how toxic foods are to you. And it's really showing you. Yeah, that's about the only thing I know about that. You know, like I said, through the years, you guys are going to really, uh, especially a lot of you YouTube healers now, are going to, and young, sharp minds are going to put this together a lot more than I have. And uh, that's what we need. That's why this is so important for me to do this for you, is that you guys take this ball and run with it, and we all collectively and together, we, we expose this truth, and we, we really get some good uh, uh, understanding, because this is, there's so much to detoxification. It isn't just a simple, I'm on a detox. That's easy for people to say. Most of you that are out there know that know what's up. And some of you are really suffering and really chemically uh, sensitive. You're having hard times. You have to go slow. So there's an art to detoxification. The end goal always is the regeneration of tissue in the human body and the restoring and improving of the condition of the cell and the fluids that take care of it. And that's as simple as you can get, which includes uh, digestion, proper absorption, proper utilization by hormones and steroids, and then proper elimination of byproducts and waste. That's obvious. When you start getting out into worlds of diseases and genes and things like that, the best gene therapy you could ever go through is this program. Because we've demonstrated year after year the regeneration of genetic memories of cells, the upliftment of those weaknesses into a higher level of performance of the cell and of the tissue itself. That is your best gene therapy. That way you're not screwing with uh, the human body or nature and the way the Creator created all this. And I think that the point that Homo sapiens must learn is that we must work in harmony with our our form, uh, physical form, emotional forms, and learn what that means and, and how that is an energetic move. Uh, I think it's quite simplistic why man suffers. I think that medical and, and pharmaceuticals have made so much ado about so little and created so much harm from that ridiculous concept. So it, that, that's just my thinking, and you've all proved that, uh, and I proved it in my clinic for... 43 years now. Shouldn't I be seeing sediment in my urine with grapes as well? I believe that, absolutely. And I think you still need to work on that, guys. Now, this is Deborah. Uh, something about you. Uh-oh, I can't feel so home. Well, thanks, honey, because we are home. You know, God is home. And 
one should always try to be that which is, even though there's there's no mental concept of that. It's not the old man in the real white beard, anything like that. It is you, your home. And when you find your home, you will find the most intensity of yourself you could ever discover. Not from the id or the individualized self. And that's what I wanted to talk to you about spiritually. It's about why God creates creation and how the religions skirt around the truth, but how they also hold the truth. And in understanding the concepts that various religions have, how that actually fits into the truth of it all, and it's easy for you to see that. And when you understand that and that method, then you're coming home. And that's just the point. And being home, then nothing can hurt you anymore. You're, 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 you're protected in consciousness because you are that which is. And then your world starts changing. And then your world starts mimicking as it is now. But you're bumping uglies with all the other creators here in a world that is totally predicted. These are already movies already made. These are films you can go view in the Akashic Records. These are at the causal world. Well known, well established by out-of-body travelers for many, many millennium. That you can view your own records. And it just shows you that these are all just movies. The library of movies, I call it, where you just pull a movie. This is this lifetime. This is this. This is this. The worlds of God are so huge, and yet it stops with you, the individual. And that individual, you, becomes the one. When then you become that awareness, you begin to see all of us are that. All of us are here. And then you find the true home. So it's cool. It's stuff. And uh, I'll work you guys uh, deeper into that to get some more time and come in here and work on that. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Deborah. I love you too, honey. I really do. Uh, I'm just going to say the last name is David. I broke my arm in a bike accident, and I have steel in my body that... Uh, can uh, that connects the arm. Oh man, are you saying I should have it removed? Well, if it's uh, titanium, it's an alkaline metal, and um, bone will only grow to it. Uh, I don't know what they're saying to you about that. Uh, sometimes when you have rods and stuff, you have to take them out at a certain point because if you have another accident and you bend the rod, uh, that's especially in rods in the femurs and stuff like that, you're in trouble. Uh, big time, and surgeons will tell you that. Get these rods out as soon as you can. If I would uh, definitely with that, you know, work, hook up with the bones formula, hook up with the parathyroid and kelp, things like that. Get on a high green drink diet, high uh, alfalfa uh, kelp, the superfoods, or get the superfood blend and pump that. Again, at the same time, you want to clean up all the trauma to that tissue, even from the surgery, and you want to get the kidneys filtering and move that lymph, which job is to come in and clean up the mess, not the blood. The job of the lymph is to come up and clean up wastes and byproducts from surgeries, from, from cells themselves, from what the blood doesn't want. So the lymph is a big deal. That's why it's a predominant fluid of the human body. So I would do that. I would only have things removed if they serve no purpose anymore. And again, a problem with some of these metals that the good problem is that you make sure that it's an alkaline metal. If it's an acid metal, then you're in trouble because you'll always have inflammation. Your body will always set an immune response around that metal, and it just things won't just ever heal. So I don't think they use acid metals much like that anymore. Uh, to tell you the truth, I'm not a surgeon, but you know I would look look into that. But. I think you're good. I don't know. You have to ask your surgeon if someday you have to have that removed as that bone grows back and stuff like that. Haven't heard back from you on what uh, way to proceed. Also does having teeth transplanted. Who's this? Uh, Fry, uh, Fred. Hey, Fred Blatchley, man. Listen, you know enough here, my friend. I, I've been uh, uh, helping you for so many years. You're a good dude. You, you know the way. Dig deep into your body. I remember your eyes. I'll never forget your eyes. I'll never forget the day you came into a talk screaming with head pressure. Screaming with it. And uh, I felt sorry for you big time, bro. And you did real good. You had to dig in. Get into that detox world and dig in. Always use two kidneys. Always use two lymphatics. And uh, proceed into the, uh, the, the adrenals. Always work on one's adrenal glands and, and the bowels. And if you never did anything but that little nest egg, that's all you need to do. Always remember diet is a key. If some of you guys are, are reaching a plateau, look at what you're eating. If you're eating vegetables, get rid of them. 
dig into the fruits, the berries, and the melons. I'm telling you, you'll find all of you are finding that. You'll find that's the deepest way to detoxify there is. Listen, I'm an old faster. I'm an old detoxifier. I've done it all my life on myself. I've done it on, I don't know, 150,000 people. So I know what's up and what's not up when it comes to detoxification. I just have to tell you, you've got to get into the fruits and the berries and the melons. I, I, I know your lymph system and you're up against a whole lot of lymph. So you just got to get your kidneys filtering, Fred, and uh, take off in that way. Also, does having teeth transplanted cause any long-term uh, health issues? Can't say that I know that. I don't think so. I've had that happen and I haven't had any long-term issues with that. They have to drill through bone and guess attach some sort of screws yeah yeah oh this is uh, I Fred this is um these are implants and uh, you know it's just the nature of the beast and again alkaline metal you never put acid metal to base chemistry it'll just break down the bone even more and I'm pretty sure they're getting with that but then I don't know there's a zirconia implants I've heard different stories about the zirconia uh, implants so I can't speak to that uh, I was doing deeper research with that. I think we discussed that on another video way back, but it didn't come out to where I thought it was really good. Uh, somebody, uh, I think it was Tony Tony, thought it was a crystals, but uh, they're not crystals. So I don't know. I don't know. I have to say that sometimes you can't worry about the small stuff. You just head on and detoxify and get your body healthy. And the thing is, though, when you get way up there, the concern is where your body will expel any metal at all. Uh, I don't know that. I can't say that. Uh, when you get deep into that world of detox, it's amazing what your body can do to itself. I mean, it's just, it's so amazing that we should be screaming it all around the world what your body can actually do from all these twisted, distorted, and uh, mutated conditions. I remember, uh, if anybody watched the X Factor the other night, that, that little girl, blind in one eye and, uh, and her both limbs mutated. I would love her case. She's so sweet, cute. Mm. I would love her case. Hey, Doc, love you. Thank you, D. Rich. Love you too, man. When you say fast on fruits, berries, and melon, do you mean sweet fruits or all fruits, tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers? Yeah, good question. Good question. You know, you can fast on those, but I'll tell you what. Fast on the veggie fruits. Somebody, let's come up with a new category, a name that we could give veggie fruits, which is more of a kind of hinging toward the, the green side, the veggie side. There should be another category in there. We've got to come up with a good name for that. Uh, I, I, you'll find your best detox in the astringent levels. The astringent levels are the subacid. Uh oh. I get, oh, here we go. I don't know if you can see this, but you've got your sweet fruits, you've got your sub. Uh, acid fruits, and then you got your acid fruits. Now, this is the natural hygienic chart. The subacid and the acid fruits are the best for detox. The thing about that is, when you have a properly grown acid fruit, like a like if you have a uh, a pineapple, for an example, that's ripe on a plant grown organically, the word acid doesn't even enter your mind. If you have a orange, which I fasted, like I told you, six months on oranges. I was going for breatharian. There's no way you would have ever said these were acids if you had tasted them. They were so sweet and nirvanic. I can't even begin to tell you. A good fruit, you'll never put an acid mix to it. It's nirvanic. It's just the way man has not taken care of the way he grows things. But I would go to those for detox, to tell you the truth. Bananas, remember I told you, king of food, according to a three-doctor professor in Canada, studied it all his life, take his word for it. Nature's perfect food, but is it a great detoxifier? Can't say that it is, but it's a good bone and, and muscle builder. We, we don't give enough power and credence to the fruit. But like I said, no one messes with orangutans. Uh, this is James. Hey, James, man. What's Dr. Morris' opinion on gene therapy? Oh, this, you're the one that asked about that. I've been selected for trials in 2015 for my retinal condition. I've had from birth, it's called, and I can't even pronounce it hardly, and my uh, cone cells are present, but don't work. 
You know, when you find things that don't work, even genetically, I think if you really see the power and consciousness of fruits and herbs, that's what they're for. They're for to go into the cell and say, wake up, baby. They're the turn-ons. They're the electrical side. I don't think man has that ability. I mean, you can try those things. You have to look at all the potential side effects, uh, uh, James, and see, see what you're going to be up with that. But I have to say that you really want to turn on the dead, you got to get into the living. And the fruits and the berries and the melons are eyes. They're, they're, they're the things that turn on the blood flows and turns on the lymph cleansings and, and turns on the thinking of cells. Remember, everything's states of consciousness. Hard to understand for the average person that every single thing here comes out of God. And that God is pure intelligence, pure awareness, pure consciousness, as the, the Easterns talk about it. it. There's hardly a word to describe what that is. It's all the same thing. Black matter, it's all, it's all the same kind of thing. Spirit, uh, all the same kind of thing. It's conscious. So out of consciousness, out of that which is living and breathing, nothing is created that's dead. So you can take it way down vibrationally, and then the atoms you know, break down, but the atoms are still conscious. So when you're bringing in these foods and these herbs, you're bringing in a level of consciousness that knows exactly what to do and interacting with other states of consciousness. And it's just, it's hard to describe that. It's hard to understand that until you understand what consciousness is, what awareness is. And there's no definition of it by the mind because the mind can't understand consciousness. It understands thought processes. It understands duality and the relationship between two, two things or three things or more. It, it, it deals with comparisons and rationales. The consciousness, the awareness behind the mind is the soul, is you. The awareness, and that's why this whole be here now syndrome of Ram Das and all these people through the years, uh, the power of the now, and all the masters that talk about it, the spiritual giants that talk about living in the present moment, is simply getting you away from the mind and thought. So you can get into the ever presence of the now, of consciousness, where you'll find that which is. Remember, God is described biblically by that which is, the allness, the omnipotent, the omnipresent, the omniscient. That is the all-powerful, the all-knowing, the all-present. There isn't anything outside of that, and all religions talk about it in just different ways. But there's nothing outside of that. You don't have the heaven and the hell. This is, this is ridiculous. These things don't exist. You have the positive and negative, but that's in creation. And you can call the negative hell if you want. You know, it's just a different side of the same coin. Now, when you want to grow spiritually and outside of this realm and this dualistic nature of thought and emotional and physical processes, then contemplation breeds the now. Whatever you're doing in meditation, if you want the ultimate ride, you can't focus on anything. You are, if anything, trying to live totally within the now with no movement of activity of thought or any other activity because there is no movement. It's all. It's complete. It's whole. And it's hard to describe to the, to the, to the mind what that is. That's why you all the real powerful masters say you got to go beyond the mind. you got to stop thinking. To understand, you have to stop thinking and stop talking. I got that one clear from my uh, little friend, Fubi Quantz. And just this is... Uh, the way it is. And understanding that will help you to understand why you're already home. You haven't gone anywhere. You're looking into the world of creation and taking your consciousness there through the bodies. So once you lose a body, your consciousness pulls back to the next body. And it's just that way. And so there's so many levels. And you're the same way. You're creating on so many levels. You're creating in the world of thought. You're creating in the world of emotions when you use desire. You're, you're moving the physical body in this inert world. So when you take the emotions and the mind out of this world, very claustrophobic, very inert, doesn't have the power to get out of the way of itself. It still needs consciousness, which is the light switch that turns on your awareness. Without consciousness, there is nothing. Nothing. Nothing can exist. And so understanding that is go a long way to, to bringing you to the state of your home. And that's 
There's nothing to say. It's simplistic. And it always has been. I've always felt the way these spiritual beings taught it was not simplistic. But I hope that I can bring that out to you simplistically, the beauty of that, and the beauty of, of all of us together as a one, and, and uniting in consciousness, and building the God force, because it's just God looking into its own creation, and running its own creation for a very unique reason. I mean, it is so wild and so cool. Sorry to go there too much. Can I do this uh, fasting detox diet and still have the gene therapy? I can't imagine why not. You know, I'll say this. If your body rejects it, it's only because it wasn't good for you. That's all I can say. Your body doesn't reject what's good for you. Come on in. That which isn't good, get out. And that's just the way the body is. And that's the way we should be. When something enters our consciousness we don't want, get out. You know, you're the one that pulls the strings here. And sometimes we don't realize that. Sometimes we play the role of the passive one. I was thinking about this the other day, because I've had this for years, is poverty consciousness, another good one. Jesus, uh, I was heavy in, I was a Jesus freak at one time, I'll call it that, because I saw Jesus Christ Superstar 32 times. And that's a poverty consciousness. And Buddha is a poverty consciousness. And there's importance in, in understanding that in the sense that if you don't desire anything, you don't want anything, you don't have anything, nothing can hurt you. At the same time, though, it limits your ability to express yourself and your ability to grow and become aware because it doesn't matter, the haves and the have-nots. It doesn't matter. It's how you perceive that. And if you perceive you need from a not position, then you'll always struggle. If you enjoy the have-nots, you'll enjoy uh, something that the haves don't have a lot of times, and that is the joy of freedom. The joy of freedom outweighs any material possessions you can have in all ways, except for shelter, food, the basic instincts of survival. The degree of that, and there's nothing wrong with driving a Mercedes if you want to, but there's a certain consciousness attached to these things. And uh, it's, just, it's just that way. There was a certain thing about having a Cadillac and having this and having that. There's a certain consciousness that's viewed by that. But we have to get away from that. I need or I want and all that and live in the beauty of I enjoy what I have. And uh, that's a way how you get out of here. Because most of you tuning in here are very spiritual beings that are on their journey home. And it's really not a journey because you're already home. It's just pulling back from the illusion of the journey. And that's where OBEs and things like that you're missing here uh, uh, I've also read that meditation, OBEs, energy work can heal the improved DNA. Well, absolutely. Absolutely, because everything is conscious. And when you're channeling consciousness and, and opening up to your consciousness, you're also impeding your cells with consciousness. And that and, and, and uplifts the cell. I remember in my journey of out-of-body travels and all this, my body, when I gave lectures, my body would cramp. And I, I would run for the junk just to bring myself down so my body wouldn't hurt me so bad because my cells hadn't matured to the level they can take that. And that's why there's a process of awakening that's important so the bodies won't fry. <laughs> and so it's just important that uh, as you go along with the raw, you're building your cells ability to channel and awaken themselves. Everything is conscious. You know, if anything, quantum physics is showing that and teaching that so people can understand that now they can prove that energy has awareness. And that's a big leap, I think, even though maybe mundane physics hasn't got there, but it's at least an understanding that there isn't anything that's not conscious, uh, even elements. You know, we talk about jewels and gems. Uh, I used to teach gem classes, gemstones, and the, the beauty of gemstones and the consciousness behind them. I was telling you a book, uh, Guardians of the Gemstone Masters, or something like that, great book, talking about each gem and what it's here for, vibrationally speaking. Here we go, taking it out of the earth, going, oh, how beautiful. But it's here to support and create this 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 earth shield of consciousness and energetics. But it is the way it is, you know. But we prize the beauty of gemstones because of their, their effect upon us and how we feel. And it's just that way with all rocks, but it's that way with all plants, and it's that way with all animals. And uh, I'd like to say it's that way with all humans. 
The doctor must also talk about the etheric body and cosmic energy. Oh, absolutely, James. You're talking about my favorite subject now, which all that is my favorite subject because it's so much uh, more exciting. You know, uh, the world of getting well physically sometimes can be tough on us. And that's why it's important sometimes to get your spirituality down where you separate yourself from your body. Don't claim your problems. Don't claim your bodies. This is You were brought into this world, you were brought into this time, and your experiences is all about your awakening. And if you've suffered a lot, let go. Let go of your body, let go of your emotions, let go of the past, live in the now, forget the future. Uh, future never comes. It's always now. Remember, the future is nothing but a succession of nows. You know, we've got time, the illusion of time, past, present, and future. The time track. And you see that starting in the lower mind, uh, the causal worlds. The etheric world, uh, James, is the ego world. That's where you individualize from the one. That's where God takes itself and makes it individual. And that way it can create unlimited little pieces of itself. Still out of the consciousness of itself. And that's your deeper innermost. That's when, when you're alone and you don't riddle with fear and loneliness. And you realize the aloneness is the intensity of the now. That's when you find all your answers. Oh, Paulo Indio. I don't know. Some of these. Remember, I'm an old country boy, guys. Uh, please keep us out on the following. My two and a half year old boy had, from what I was told, Giardia a few months ago. Before my doctor could guess what it was, he lost weight big time. Then we took him to other pediatrician told us to use Flagyl. Oh, oh. My results were good right after two days, but came back after two months again. He took Flagyl. I really don't want him to, but this time after 10 days, he still got better uh, being loose and sandy and smelly. What a nightmare. Well, that's the beauty of herbs. You know, Parasite G, take the capsules, clean that out. Remember culturing medium means your son probably has some real interstitial lymphatic constipation going on here. Meaning, again, two and a half year old, you're going to see the lymph, you're going to see the adrenals, you're going to see the kidneys, you're going to go after that. Remember, think of things systemically. Think of things holistically. You're not just trying to attack Giardia. You want to know why there's a home for Giardia. doesn't matter. Staph, strep, we're all full of that. What takes it off? Go into culturing mediums. Go into why you culture and go after that, which is toxemia. And toxemia is dealt with through the lymphatic system. And so always go after that. And then you use the uh, uh, parasitic uh, herbals and you'll be very successful. And uh, clean up the bowel and clean up the lymph system. He says, I've been following you for the last three four months ever since he started to thinner on the first time. Glad I found you. Thanks, man. Oh, we live in Portugal. Yeah. Love the Portuguese. I love Portugal. I would love and I, I was wanting to move to Sintra at one time. What a beautiful little town up in the mountains. I love Sintra. Outside of Lisbon. Beautiful. I've never been down in the lower Argarve and all that, where all the stars are, down by the ocean. I'd love to see that. But the Portuguese people are just some good, good people. All people are good. The Turkish are good. The Romanians are good. We're all good people just wanting freedom. It's the governments. It's the world order. You know, it's these, these narcissistic uh, souls that come in and like power over others and all this kind of crap. They have their own lessons and their own karma. And, but it also keeps us free. Freedom, I can't tell you, is the most important thing to strive for and to create in your lives. Freedom gives you the ecstasy and joy of not being trapped at any level. Hard to get, actually, uh, from all levels. Seriously thinking on visiting you in January or so for a consult? I have your book. Oh, thanks, man. Also know that Marcy uh, and Jennifer know a lot of things. They are good, too, guys. Uh, there's a place that sells God's herbs in Greece. There is. Absolutely. Got some good uh, friends in Greece. Absolutely. You know, we want to become a one world strength and a one world conscious power. Not power from the world of control, but of love and joy, helping people get their happiness back, no matter where you live. I think the beauty we have to open up is the beauty of who we are individually and why I created all these different countries and all these different people. I love it. We should. I love to see different people. I used to spend time in airports when I did a little military work. And... Uh, 
love that love to sit in airports and people watch because it's just everybody's unique and if we enjoy the uniquenesses and get out of this need for power and control because these souls are super trapped and the karma they're creating for themselves is like oh man they're going to be here for a while and that's the thing and maybe that soul needed that who knows and maybe that needed to bring out the need to be free and learn how to be free in your creation because if you want the highest part of god consciousness then you're going to have to learn how to be free in the drama. You're going to have to be the observer or the watcher at the gate. So when you turn, when you get into these high worlds where you're, world, where you're the creator of your own worlds, and that emanates out of your beingness, you can't stop it. It emanates out of your consciousness that all things are good. Because you'll see that. Get a good view on that. Get the Tiger's Fang. I think it's the Tiger's Fang by Paul Twitchell. Uh, he also has so many books out there, but The Key to Secret Worlds, but I'm pretty sure he talks a lot about that in The Tiger's Fang. And a really good, good look at what that is and what you're in for. And it just all gives you the expansiveness of the all, you know, and it's just there's nothing to say about it. Don't put it outside of yourself, because then you'll never find, you'll never be happy, and you'll never find your sucre. You'll never find the joy and the allness and the ecstasy and the bliss and the nirvana that being home gives you. And being home is you don't lose yourself. You're totally yourself, but you're also, we're all together. We're all one. Hard to describe in consciousness because there isn't bodies to separate. There isn't time tracks to differentiate. There isn't differences. It all is out of that one consciousness. Hard to describe because anything that the all can't have form. You can't give form to that which is the creator because then you would totally miss the creator. It's formless. It's infinite. And there's no words to describe that. There's no pictures or images to give it. Sometimes these images hold us back from truth. But we do our best. Sometimes we use holy people as our images. But I say you don't need to do that. You know, that's how it was always. The master of the Chila syndrome. It was even in Ekankar. But it's always been the master of Chila syndrome. I disagree with that thinking. I think all masters should teach the Chilas or the students that you are the master. But then the master is the separation from the all. So it's just... A wise one, one who has made the journey, that can tell you how to make the journey. That's all all spiritual beings are. And they'll tell you, don't look to me. That's a true master. A master is a, a being that says, listen, if you do this and do this, this is what you're going to experience. There's pitfalls, and they help you with the pitfalls. But they don't say, look to me. Uh-uh, uh-uh. And that was some failing of the earlier years of all teachings. The Master Chila Syndrome. It exists, still exists quite heavily in India. And you got to break that. A true spiritual giant like Jesus will say, don't look to me. Here's the way, the truth, and da-da-da-da-da. Watch your step. <laughs> All right, this is Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Now, two years ago, I went into the ER because I had extreme fatigue and psychiatric issues. Psychiatric, psychiatric <laughs> Issues, anxiety, panic attacks. That's not psychiatric. It's like, Puh! <laughs> this is my day. No, this is emotional issues, and this comes from the adrenals. This is totally adrenal suppression here, and uh, uh, or your adrenals are weak. Chronic fatigue, all of this comes out of that. It's not your, your mental states. It's your emotional states. But it, 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 it's your neurological issues, and you have to fix them because they lead into nothing good, you know. Uh, they took my blood and, and stated that I, I'm hypothyroid, of course. Well, that's still, that's not your, um, that wasn't the nervous system. But if your parathyroid was down and you had low calcium utilization, it could trip into that, absolutely. They prescribed me levothyroxine, uh, 0.88. I have uh, been on that dose for two years. I have been eating raw, clean for eight months, lost 20 pounds, and it wouldn't go any further. 
I have attempted to back off of Levithor Oxen and a lot of bloat, water retention goes down within two days. Well, use a glandular then, sweetheart. Use a glandular to hit that thyroid to where you're not using a synthetic uh, thyroxin, that you're using a glandular to enhance the cells and let the cells perform and create. That's, the, all, that's how it all works. Uh, and do that. Uh, after two days, my head starts getting weird. I start having anxiety, tightness. You know, also, I might have to say that I may be looking at the pituitary gland. You're seeing a lot here of a reaching from the thyroid down, but I have a feeling you might be dealing with some pituitary. Look at your monthly periods, Sarah. See if they're irregular. Uh, what's your height? Are you too short, too tall? Uh, you have rapid growth of hair, things like this. And see if you have a, a pituitary issue. Take a picture of your eyes. Take a look at that. And take a look and see if it's more the pituitary than it is the thyroid. Uh, when I take my prescription dosage, I sweat profusely at work and I feel like I'm on fire. Well, see, that's too much. And what you're hitting is the thyroid too hard. So that's giving hyperthyroidism. So I'd say the glandulars work better than the hormone. And uh, I'd, I'd suggest maybe you try a pituitary first. Get, look at that. Look at these uh, 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 relationships to see if you have a pituitary. It'd be better to hit your pituitary if it's a problem than trying to get your pituitary to respond through the thyroid. This could create what you're dealing with here. That's why I kind of suspect your pituitary is an issue. And see, is was it your TSH that was off with the levothyroxine? Uh, my doc keeps telling me the dose is correct. Well, you know, when you have a doctor and you're telling your symptoms is obvious the dosage is too high, which you're on very low, but still, uh, well, actually, you're almost at one, so I don't know. Uh, then don't trust that. You, sometimes we have to think, of, when especially comes to medical doctors, sometimes you have to take responsibility for yourself, guys. Cut your dosage in half and try it. But I'll say move to the glandulars if it was me. I can't tell you what to do in terms of their, their concepts. That's their ridiculousness. But I, I, and I still say medical doctors get into glandulars and, you, and you'll get away from this kind of crap. And you might find the same thing with glandulars. But I would be thinking pituitary, hit a pituitary glandular. Definitely, if it was me, I'm seeing these kind of symptoms. I'm going to cut way down on my dosage. I don't care what my medical doctor thinks. Sometimes these guys are stagnant in their thinking. And they use chemistry to try to, 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 instead of symptomology, and I'm more use symptomology instead of ridiculous labs. Sometimes lab work, and I've said this quite often, that lab work when it comes to uh, steroids and hormones are often way off. Uh, what the heck is going on? Now, I think, I think your, your, your dosage is way too high. I think, again, your, your pituitary is probably more at issue. Uh, if you can't get, get a picture of your eyes and look at it, we've got enough information on the YouTubes. Uh, I think our attorney got uh, the YouTube people to get our YouTubes up, so I think they're putting them up. Thank you, YouTube. I mean, stand for truth, YouTube. Don't let anybody push you around. Don't let any government agency push you around. Nobody. Google nobody. Everybody should stand up for the rights. That's the only way you're going to shut down the, these, this government spying issue is for all these corps to stand up for rights and to fight for them. You're making the money. You have the right. Get constitutional attorneys. Stand up for rights. Yeah, that's the only thing I can tell you. Um, it's not a complex question, really. I think, uh, I think you're just, you're, you're, you're screwed to the pituitary first. And look at that. If not, then cut weight, cut half on your dose. Take that responsibility on yourself, Sarah. As I have a complex body here, any recommendations or advice will help. Uh, I have tons of parasites coming out my, wow. I have tons of parasites coming out of my stool. I've been doing enemas and have, and they keep coming out. Can this be contributing to my fatigue? Oh, absolutely, sweetheart. Maybe not thyroid issues, but uh, Sarah May. Oh, wait. Well, you know what? I'd do that parasite G. I'd do parasite G and M, and probably the M in the liquid and the G in the capsules. Make sure you get all gut, uh, liver, pancreatic flukes and worms. And uh, systemically, it'll help to uh, go that way, too. At the same time, uh, perk up those adrenals, get the kidneys filtering. That's going to be key no matter what your thing is. But if you're having this much bowel issues, I'm going to suggest that you probably have pituitary. But then take a look at that. Your eyes tell you the story. And take a look at that and see, and that might be helpful to you. Uh, hello, Doc. I can't even pronounce your name. I, I apologize here. Maybe you have it over here in a more simple way. No, but the question is, my boyfriend and I have just come across your videos and uh, frugivorism a few months ago. 
it made us very happy because he has severe joint inflammation and issues. Yeah, this is important that your boyfriend take care of this because bye-bye joints, and you don't want to lose your joints. So again, this is going back to the lymphatic system, the kidneys, and adrenals. Real key to get this. Remember, inflammation, keyword, acidosis. And just know that an inflammatory response is generally toward proteins and, of course, the buildup of acids. And, you know, that's just as simple as it is. Get these kidneys filtering and you'll see that turn around and get all this inflammation will back down and you'll be good and you'll keep your joints. Anything that's deteriorated will rebuild. Make sure you have a good parathyroid gland. Make sure you're sweating and all that's good. Uh, issues and no medication seem to ever work on him, but after three months of eating fruit and a few green juices here and there, he can now almost move painlessly. See what I'm saying? I mean, you guys are doing beautiful. And that, that's what I love. You guys are really doing, all of you guys are so good and you're doing so well. Keep going. Don't stop. Keep going until your body, you can't stand yourself. And then back down if you want. And, uh, you know, nothing's perfect. Now, that's another thing. Try not to get too fan fanatical about things and, 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 and wanting everybody to get fanatical because it's not going to happen. Uh, you know, there's the Dan McDonald's, there's the Robert Morris's, there's all levels out there. I was a fanatic at one time and again, I lost all my friends. Uh, I scared them off. I was too fanatical. I didn't realize I was. I was just real happy. I said, I found truth. Here, look, I found truth. And I guess I shoved it in their faces and not realizing that. So, you know, that's part of love and understanding and humility. <laughs> you know, like the guy on uh, X Factor last night. Have some humility, dude. And so, good. I love I hear love what you're saying. Get a little deeper into the kidneys and adrenals, though. That'll get your steroids up. It'll get your neurotransmitters up. It'll get his kidneys filtering. And that was true on you, sweetheart. He has uh, geodes in his shoulder, bones, and bone cartilage. He used to be a kickboxer. Had one in the other day. Uh, pro kickboxer. Oh, man. But he had to quit, and he is now trying to detoxify, regenerate his tissues. And that's the thing. When we learn that, then you can go back and be a good kickboxer. You'll have more agility. You'll have more flexibility, so to speak. And it'll be better in all ways. And the mind will be quieter. You'll be quicker in all ways. And that's the thing. Build up right. But first you have to clean out, get everything fixed, get the acids out, and then go in that way. And boy, you'll do well. What do you think would be his best for that? Fruit juices or green juices? Fruit juices, actually. But you know what? Keep going with the greens. I don't care until you reach a plateau. And when you reach a plateau, it doesn't seem like it's getting better, then pop into the grapes and into the, you know, the full-time fruits, berries, and melons. Stay away from the acid fruits, uh, especially those that are not grown properly or picked properly, and uh, stay sub-acid mainly. I know I'm going fast, but my, I have a short time left here, and I'm trying to get this down to you. Uh, but when you want to build, you can use the green juices, the alfalfas and things, and that can build you quicker. Um, you'll see when you go that way. Also, he had his tonsil removed back when he was a toddler, and he's been... So that tells you, when you see people that have had their tonsil removed young, they're already having lymphatic problems. Of course, back then, people had a lot of milk, a lot of formulas, and that was congesting people's lymph system so fast that they, you know, it's still happening today. But... Uh, Still, it just shows you that he has lymphatic problems, and that that's why he's filling the inflammation in the joints. But tell you the truth, this is all through him. Remember, we talk about this as a systemic issue, and so it's all through him. So that's where you have to take care of that and, um, and get that systemic detox. Because, again, if it's in our joints, it's in our brain, it's in our heart, it's in our lungs, and it, these are not good places to have these things. You know, they, the, the toll comes. Memory loss, hair loss, um, it leads into what they call Alzheimer's, dementia, all these sort of things. Uh, he, okay, here's the gun. He has been experiencing very, very stubborn acne problems uh, with genetic with genetic baldness. Well, that's what I'm saying right there. Systemic in him. It's, he's loaded. Uh, I would get forget the vegetables. <laughs> Dig deep into the world of fruits, berries, and melons. Get the herbs for the kidneys, the adrenals, uh, uh, the lymphatic system. Clean up the bowels. Uh, really get into the body and get it like we talk about here. Get a full body detox. Do it right, and then he'll have his life back. But going back to his genetics and, and, and his childhood, you know, going back and doing that. But you don't want to be bald. You don't want to be bald. Not good.
Acidosis on brain is not good. And he's been both since in puberty. Holy crap. So your boyfriend's in trouble here a little bit, honey, but it sounds like he's getting himself out of it. And that's just what he needs to do. Dig deeper and keep on going until the hair's back, everything's back. Freak your friends out. He's very sad that they took his tonsil. Well, you know what? Yeah, nothing you can do about it. Don't dwell on it. It's just a physical body. Keep digging in the body. Make it healthy is all you can do. Can't dwell on the past. Not worth it. Uh, would like to know if he could regrow them. Well, people have regrown their tonsils. Now, I don't know about this many years after that. I haven't had enough people to go to these levels, but we'll see it. We're going to start seeing all kinds of cool stuff, so we're going to see things like that. But I've seen spinal bifida after years down grow new, new uh, uh, L4 and L5. So I've seen some neat stuff coming in after years and years down. So I don't put it, I don't rule anything out. Now, how can we rule anything out? If we rule something out, then we block the ability for that to happen. And that's what we can't do. It's what medical has to learn. In healing, we don't block anything because anything is possible in the worlds of God. Let me tell you. And we've proved that over and over. Fox News has done some stories on us. Even, even the, uh, the, 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 uh, uh, the Fox analysts, the people doing the stories are going, whoa, I can't believe it. Some of these will get up on the YouTube one of these days. Some of these stories they've done, done on us. Lots of love from Belgium. Love to you guys. Keep going. Dig in deep. The water's fine. Boy, I'll tell you, I got so, so far behind in your questions, guys. I, I immensely apologize, and I'm hoping that answering questions for some will reach in and answer questions for most. Like this stubborn acne, you dig in until there is no acne anymore. You're stubborn or not. It just means you haven't got to Wellville yet. You're still down that road. Go to Wellville, no more acne. And it just shows the depth of subcutaneous backing up, the whole nine yards, balding. Now you're looking at pituitary suppression, thyroid, parathyroid suppression, who knows? So make it a joy to go to Wellville because it's a joy and it's ecstasy and it's love and it's fun and we're all here together with all the spiritual beings this is when you study all the teachings this is why this lady said it felt like home because we're all here we're all here guys not physically not emotionally not mentally we're all individuals in those worlds but here we're all here Let's see. Well, I've only got five minutes. You know what? How are you? This is, uh, oh, thanks for this question. I am drinking a gallon of Hill All Tea a day. Is there a limit to how much I can drink? Well, I think a gallon's too much. I think you ought to cut it back, uh, make it light, and make it your daily tea if you like. I would say uh, three, four glasses a day is plenty. You know, you don't need to overdo it. You really don't. Make your diet really uh, count on there. But you know what? I'm going to have to come back because everybody's going to leave the building. So this is with great love that I tell you all that you're all going to be well. You're all going to be taken care of and just work it. We've got a staff. We're trying our best. Please don't be impatient with us. We're doing our best. We love you all. We're only here to help you get well. It's not difficult, but in some people have a difficult road to get to Wellville. Don't give up. Don't lose faith. Always be happy. Find your individuality. Spend time alone with yourself. Enjoy the beauty of who you are because each and every one of you are beautiful spiritual beings, the angel of lights. And be the light. Bring the light to this world. Always being the light. And the light is full of love, joy, consciousness, awareness, not mind, not matter, love, conscious awareness, and you will walk and give out truth as you, as you are. So I love you all. You have a great night. And uh, uh, this weekend, maybe I can add some more. I'm going to try to do a video on the herbs, though, this week. And hopefully uh, next week, I'm going to start seeing people again. Uh, hopefully I'll have some days I can catch up and uh, really catch up with you. You guys are really... Uh, doing well and asking me some good questions and uh, maybe one of these days I won't see anybody anymore. I mean Marcy's so good and we get a good staff here and, and I can just spend more time with the videos and help you through this channel. Um, it, uh, I think I can reach more people doing that.
so it's a blessing to uh, to to have you in in your space you know i appreciate you opening that door uh and just many love and blessings to each and every one of you have a great night and may the blessings be